Hey folks, so in this video we're going to talk about extrapolation. That's just taking a pose that's like this and then taking a character that's like this. And you take that character and you adapt it to this pose. So we can kind of see that this character or this, uh, the dancer that's over here, it's got an amazing action line, got an amazing, amazing silhouette. So it's very easy to tell what the, what the pose is and what's happening, where there's a weight shift, you know? Um, so we can kind of think about, uh, sketching that out to getting, to get an idea and to study this actual pose. Okay. Now, now that I've done my homework and I have this sketch and it's just about done. Okay. I can obviously spend more time to, to pretty it up. The question is like, how do we take this and turn it into something, you know, that's, you know, comic book and animation ready. And, uh, and the thing is, is like, how do we take this anatomy of <laughs> Flamingo, who's got wings and got, you know, legs that bend in the other direction? How are you going to take that and apply it? So one of the things that I would recommend is you should find some animal references and you should try to draw those animal references a bunch of times because you're going to learn quite a bit from doing those studies. And, you know, if you can find some reference images online that will show you the, the breakdown of the actual animal, then this is going to make your life a lot easier. Okay. And you don't have to just do life drawing of humans. You could do life drawings with, you know, vehicles and things like that as well. Um, but anyways, you know, as we're artists, we're trying to get really good. Um, you know, there's a billion places you can go and do your learning from. Okay. So now, now that I've kind of, you know, just pretend that I drew a hundred flamingos and I drew a hundred uh, model poses and now I'm actually trying to make this happen. I need to think about, okay, how am I going to, how am I going to translate this anatomy onto this pose? Okay. So most importantly, I'm going to start with the action line because that action line is important. Um, it really determines the entire strength of the pose. Next, I'm thinking about, well, what is the torso of this main character? So I could think about, well, what's the torso of a flamingo doing and what's it looking like? So it's probably going to be a little bit more of a bean and I could probably have the tail going in this direction. Remember, action line will dictate where stuff goes and then later I can go back and map things. Okay, good idea to take this and really extend the neck and then come up with the, come up with the, the cranium. And then, um, I could probably, I would probably normally do this later, but let's just, let's just map out where the beak is going to be. Cause I kind of, am already thinking I'm going to put a wing right here and a wing right there. Okay. So now that that's set up, we need to just erase a little bit. So it's a good idea to think about how this is carrying all the weight. So let's go and exaggerate that. So we know that the, we know that the leg is going to go bend in this direction. So even though I have a tendency to want to put the leg straight down, I want to think of an opposite curved direction for this action line. So let's just kind of put, put the flamingo's foot this way. Might even want to push this out just a little bit more, but it's probably good right there. And then let's think about this other leg that's out here and do a little foreshortening and think about the actual foot of the flamingo. Okay, looking pretty good. So now this is a very strong arm right here that's taking up a lot of space. So here, let me just lasso tool this and I'm gonna delete this. Don't want it to distract. Control D to deselect, B for brush to bring this back. And then now I need to think about, okay, where am I gonna put this pose? You can see that the elbow is pretty close to the head. So if the elbow is close to the head, that's probably a good place to, to think about the bend in the arm for the actual, um, for the actual, uh, the wing, pardon me. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to draw and speak and think all at the same time. Okay, so now I've got the, the feathers kind of mapped out. I'm thinking about how can I leave a little space here and some space in between as my negative space. And I'm just going to put this there to map that so I know it's in the right place. 
and then I need to think about well, what am I going to do with this other leg or this other other wing? So maybe it's going to do its thing and it's bending back behind this, and then I'll just uh, I'll just put a couple feathers going in this direction because I don't I don't want it to detract from this graceful curve that I have over here um, in the body. Okay, good time to go and take the opacity, drop all this down. And then I put a new layer right on top of it. Um, good idea to do a silhouette study like we saw in one of the other videos. So maybe what I can do is I can go back and just come up with a shape based approach to drawing. Because again, what I want to do is I want to focus on a strong silhouette. And the easiest way to do that is to get the biggest brush that I could draw with and to really try to push and to get some of those get some of those um, portions of the anatomy inwards and it's it's really nice to be able to fill such a large space and you can draw freely and you don't have to worry about deleting stuff because you know look at how quickly I was able to draw this I can go back and later I can go and um, I can go and erase it and redraw it quickly if I need to Okay, so final step, in fact, let me just go drop the opacity on this one because I don't really need to see that much of it. And on my last layer, which is right on top, now is a good time for me to go for a nice dark um, line weight um, and or a nice, a nice dark line. And then I can come up with a thinner line weight and then I could just start to draw this character. So again, um, I'm taking the pose of a ballet because there's an idea that's attached to it. And I'm taking that idea and I'm gonna use it to help and communicate an idea with this character. And I can get as cartoony as I want with it. So maybe, maybe I'm going for something a little bit more 2D. Maybe I wanna have something that's a little bit more realistic. Whatever the case is, I could just have a lot of choices with what I'm gonna be doing. But you know, it's, uh, we're looking pretty good. So obviously what I would try to do is go back to my reference, find a better image that would allow me to see what the flamingo's feathers look like as they're spread outwards. And I know you could see by the location at the tip of the feathers are a lot darker. So I could just start to map all these in and just start to make it look a lot prettier. But you know, I think it's about time to call this video. Okay, so uh, let's just very, very quickly review. Um, do a bunch of studies of some poses. Do a bunch of anatomical studies and try to get it right. Then bring all of them together once you've got the, uh, the line work done and you're pretty much all set and try to take this, this pose of, a, uh, of an animal and put it into the, the direction and the, the directionality and the attitude and the exaggeration of a human being. All right, guys, I hope that was a helpful video. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks.